Hey, this is Malika with Evanston Live TV, the voice of the people. <laughs> I am hitting the streets again today to find out what's going on with Evanstonians, what's in your heart, what's on your mind, what's in your soul. And this evening, I am speaking to an Evanstonian uh, by the name of Joyce Hill. And calling this episode, Joyce Hill, The Other Mother. Uh, this piece is on gun violence and um, you know we hear from mothers of uh, victims but we seldom hear from the mother of the shooter um, you know what what's really the story you know um, when I spoke with Joyce over the phone you know she she just really captured me because it, it leaves a lot of questions in your mind as to what really happened you know that night uh, that her son um, was involved in a situation uh, that led to his conviction um, it's, it's, it's a very interesting episode so Malika, there was an interview I granted to another individual recently that reported, just like you are, on this side of the story as far as a mother is concerned or how gun violence affects everybody or people. And um, in the process of the time to print the story or air the story or get it out to the public, she told me that there were certain parts of the interview that she would not be able to or she had decided not to do and I don't know if she was advised to do it or that was just her own judgment call but because it would anger certain people that's what the problem is that's how we got in this situation in the first place nobody's brave enough to step up and basically do the right thing uh, like for example um, the incident that erupted between my son and this individual was over a lie. And in that instance, nobody was brave enough to step up and do the right thing. Um, and they let the lie fester. And I don't know if the truth came out about the situation before or after the shooting, but nonetheless, if somebody knew it after the fact, they certainly knew it before the fact, and no one stepped up. Even to this day, there are people that are very aware of some things that are going on and they just won't say nothing and with gun violence itself uh, there are people that are shot and killed every day and somebody knows what happened but they won't say nothing um, that's, that's not the type of mother I was uh, my son shot an individual and as a result, the individual died of that gunshot wound. I don't know if he would have lived, if there had been swifter medical care, but I do know, based on eyewitness accounts, that the scene was so chaos at that particular time that all that is going to be remembered is my son shot this man and he died. Um, there are witnesses that were unable to be found during the trial that could corroborate some things that would have been beneficial to my son. But because we couldn't do such a thing, we pled the case. And uh, the only version that has been able to live is the one that the media and the publications wanted to present to the public and that happens too many times in cases uh, the public is fed one story and the other details are not brought to the surface the problem with that is it's all, always at the expense of a person's reputation and livelihood um, as I mentioned before uh, my son 
served his time. But he was never called by his name again. He was always called the boy who shot so-and-so. And that's not the name that I gave him at birth. And um, it's just so detrimental. There's no win-win situation in this. Um, my granddaughter lost a father. My son lost a brother. I lost a son to the system. But it's no win in this. People have to start doing the right thing. And if it's telling the truth, whether people want to hear it or not, they need to start doing it. Some of my son's close friends had decided to step back whether than confront certain issues that they know are going on that are not right. And they still persist to this day. Um, in the article that was done before, that aired before yours, even though we started probably a little bit before hers, um, I was called irreverent. I'm not irreverent. I am. I'm the exact opposite. What would have been a better way to describe me would be bold, brazen, willing to do what others might not be willing to do. But I'm not irreverent. So that's something else I wanted to be able to say. As far as power of the pen, the pen wasn't in my hand, so that's how it went down. Um, another thing I'd like to say about gun violence. All gun violence is not gang violence. Evanston is a extremely multi-generational community. Gangs in Evanston don't work because you end up being in opposition with someone that could very well be your first cousin. So there's no such thing as gangs in Evanston. But society has placed a value on black male group dynamics. And that's how it will always be remembered. Um, it's no different than a frat house on a college campus. When those brothers are bonding, doing their line and initiation, it's the same type of dynamic. We won't talk about what the difference is. But it's been demonized and it's always at the expense of individuals. Um, I also feel like that some of the reason that it's done that way is to play up the importance of certain entities and make their worthiness viable in their function. That's the best I can say as far as that's concerned. Um, I believe that all situations can be handled. Mediation within itself is a lucrative practice. And I believe that if people really care, all things could be brought to the table. Now don't get me wrong, everybody's not going to agree. But we had two mothers that were involved in this, that knew each other very well. I was available on several occasions. To this day, people can walk up to me and talk to me. I'm not unapproachable. Um, so if you really want to work something out, it can be done. So with that being said, I just feel like certain people don't want to work things out. They want to continue uh, to fester this urban legend about this family feud or this gang this and gang that. But it can be quelched and it can be ended. 
and hopefully no one has to die to solve the problem. Um, I was advised when some of the things were going on, uh, a, a pastor, I believe he's a pastor, or he's a church person. He's pretty high in the church. I won't name the church. He contacted me and he said, Joyce, can't you guys just leave town? And I said, what do you mean leave town? I said, can you guys just leave town till this dies down? And respectfully, because I'm not irreverent, I said to the individual, I said, well, that means you know that there's an apparent threat to my life or my family's life. And the fact that you know there's a threat and that's your only solution to the problem means you're sticking your head in the sand. That's how things were dealt with from 2005 up until this very day. Um, it has been really hard for me to regain um, employment. I lost my job due to some unsavory circumstances. I went to a individual that had the power to hire people. He has this. How long were you on your job? I had worked my job for 14 years and uh, lost it. I've been unemployed for the last two years, a little over two years. And this man has this wonderful program that's supposed to help people redirect their lives. I went to him and asked him for a job and he referred me to somebody else. So that just shows you how people don't want to deal with you once they think you're tainted. So if I was an ex-offender trying to re-enter society, that's what happened to my son when he came home. So there is some accountability and some culpability that should be transferred and owned up to by other individuals as well. And I'm not afraid to say that. Um, back on talking about gun violence. I have been affected by gun violence in every aspect that could possibly be visited. They allowed the hurt and anger between us two mothers to be the barrier to the understanding of how we got here. Because everybody knows if you don't learn from your mistakes, you're going to be condemned to repeat them. And my son was not the only one who made this mistake even if it was 20 years later. Um, it was done more than once, and it was done more than once by more than one person. It's obvious, because if it hadn't have been, there wouldn't have been no need to be calling this gang violence in Evanston. But I think it was mishandled. I think it was grossly mishandled. Um, and I think it was done at the expense of the families that were involved. <coughs> you have to excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. The other part of this is, uh, with gun violence, however it starts or ends, however it starts, it always ends bad. period. Um, And that's, it's detrimental, no matter what. Um, I said my, my friend has um, been able to speak to me again. Um, she's come to terms with that. Um, I spoke to a, another friend who had lost her son to a terrible, grueling act of gun violence against her son. And the first thing that she said to me is, forgiveness is hard. Anything worth having is going to be hard. Nobody's asking you to forget your child if you lose them to gun violence. 
but you have to get past that moment. I walked around Evanston for a long time like a, a lady with a scarlet letter on my back. I, would, I wouldn't go certain places. Uh, I didn't buy a car for like three years because I didn't know if somebody was going to do something to my car. Uh, because the spin on this story was so... It was just supernatural the way this story had been coming out and being told. It was like it had never happened anywhere in the world whatsoever. And that's just unfortunate. Uh, I have a real good friend and she thought I was acting funny. But what I was really trying to do was stay away from her because I didn't want any harm to come to her. I had received several threats behind it. That's the part of the story that never got to come out. Um, I did send my son out of town to save his life. There was on more than one occasion that he came home shirtless or scarred up or running for his life. But when you go to certain authorities about it, the way they handled the situation was just unrealistic. So at that particular point, you don't you don't even want to trust them again, you know. I believe now um, the trust level has started to be reclaimed with the community and certain other entities within Evanston, but there's still a missing factor that's going on because certain people won't step up and do the right thing. Anytime you can stand in front of a city council meeting and address them and make a public threat to someone and nobody holds you accountable for it, something is not right and I endured that and it's on tape but nothing was done about it um, on more than one occasion that happened too wow I forgot about that but there is a lot of bias that is often entered into these type of conflicts um, and again we're back to being true and being fair and being righteous and doing the right thing. Um, I have been able to somewhat show my face again. Uh, I moved out of town for a little while, for about three years after my son's conviction. And uh, he pled guilty to the charges without any contest for several reasons. One of them was because he indeed, indeed did cause the injury that took this individual's life. Um, the other matters of the case would never get told because again, there was no trial. But there was some interesting mitigating factors that went on to this event that night. But I'm going to have to let them rest for a little while. Uh, and that's fine. To a degree. Because my son's name is Antoine Hill. It's not the boy who shot by Russian. And that's what I want to be remembered. And if nothing else is taken away from this interview, he was a man, he was a father, he was a son, he's a brother. And he has a right to live his life after he pays his debt to society, just like anybody else. And that's all I'm asking for. And I thank you, Malika, for this interview and this opportunity to say just that.